We begin this Lenten journey with a standard text for the first Sunday of every Lent, Jesus facing down the devil in the wilderness. Over the years, many of us have heard this text and wondered how in the world Jesus got through those temptations in one piece. The Gospel of Luke is quite dramatic about it all, and so is Phil, and makes the devil and Jesus seem like equal sparring partners out there in the desert going at it with each other like prize fighters. We are relieved, aren't we? When Jesus finally gets the upper hand, the devil packs up his bags, and Jesus is free to roam about the country. This morning, rather than focusing on the temptations, I want to break open for us the place where the test took place, the wilderness. Because I have a hunch that many of us have already been there, and maybe some of us have even visited it several times in our life. We may not in our lives have faced the same temptations as Jesus, but we certainly are well acquainted with the place where wild things happen. Today, it could look like a hospital emergency room or a junior high classroom when you hear about your child's bad behavior or a bed in hospice or perhaps your boss's office when she calls you in to tell you your job has been terminated. We know the wilderness, even in the midst of our busy urban existence, and we are well acquainted with the desert, aren't we? Even with bay water all around us. However, many of us do not like to seek the wilderness. We want all the comforts of life to be around us. That means we want plenty of water, we want plenty of food, we want lots of blankets, and if we are lucky, we want HBO or Showtime, or if you're like me, we want Downton Abbey, PBS. We spend a lot of money, don't we? An effort trying to stay on this side of the desert, attempting to live lush lives, and trying to to just stay out of the trouble zone of our life. If only we can keep the wilderness or the desert at bay, we won't have to face the test, as Jesus did, of our own ability to handle ourselves in difficult moments and difficult times. The real wisdom and deep power of departing into the wilderness as a spiritual practice has been lost on American culture and our religious instincts have been so watered down, it's difficult for us to comprehend the value, the strength, the depth, and the meaning of this time we call Lent. So we give something up, and in our culture we give something up like coffee, or sweets, or wine, rather than making time to walk barefooted and desperate, hungry, into the wilderness. So from Ash Wednesday till Easter Sunday of this year, we are invited, this congregation and all of us in it, are invited to be broken open with each other and with God. Lent is named after an old English word which means simply spring, and I think it means Spring, as in the daffodils push up from the ground or the wisteria pods are exploding on the vine and the earth heaves forth into newness of life. But Lent, this time, this sacred time of Lent, is also about that timely moment in our Christian life when we get to push through all our resistances, a time to mulch the spirit, and cut away old blossoms and dead leaves so that the new shoots can come through. It's a time to trim away from our spirits all that has become burdensome and dry so that the greening of the soul can begin again. It is a time to allow breakage to occur, scary for some of us, even if our basic instincts warn us to keep everything intact and preserve our careful selves for the long haul. 
This past Wednesday, we gathered for worship in our large assembly as we reenacted the powerful ritual of receiving the sign of the cross on our foreheads, made from ashes burned from the palms of Palm Sunday and mixed with oil for the beginning of Lent. In that time, some of us made a decision to give something up for Lent. Maybe that glass of wine or coffee or dessert for 40 whole days coming up to Easter. And there are some of us who decided to add something to our lives, like regular exercise or daily prayer or my own personal favorite, cleaning out all the drawers in the house before Easter Sunday. All worthy Lenten practices. But we can go deeper in this moment if we wish. Break me open. Break me open. It's beautiful. And it speaks to me of being available for subtracting something or adding to the life of the Spirit by being willing to take some strong steps into the wilderness of life with God. So, if you have spent a lot of time or money in this past year trying to keep it together in your life without becoming vulnerable, this Lent is not for you. If you want to grow your spirit without allowing any new breakage to occur, this Lent is not for you. And if you have decided to love God and your neighbor but still harbor old resentments and are stonewalling forgiveness somewhere in your spirit, then this Lent is not for you. But if you want to see what life might be like without your usual painkillers and avoidance, and you know that somehow, somewhere, you have resisted God's remarkable grace, then this Lent might make a big difference in your life. There are stories, stories about how we get on this journey. Everyday stories, I heard these stories this week by people who have already entered the wilderness. I spoke with an old and dear friend this past week who has retired after 40 years of ministry. He reported to me that he doesn't miss, surprise, surprise, preaching or administration or worship. I was surprised. He misses the deep human interaction of ministry and the gift of the intimate conversations that he has been able to have with people. He reported that he is lonely and a little blue. And he said that he is standing at the edge of God's wilderness and he is ready, so ready, to walk in. Someone else this week prepared for heart surgery, the heart surgery, open heart surgery of a close relative. Hoping and praying that all would go well, he stood at the desert of human experience waiting for the surgery to be completed, waiting for it to go well. This is a very special person. And he also prepared to wander out into no man's land alone if the surgery was not. These stories are all around us. Jesus, the scripture says, full of the Spirit, full of the Spirit, was led into the wilderness. The Spirit of God in the text permeates the wilderness conversation with the devil. When Jesus has the courage to respond each time with strength but also considerable vulnerability, God presides and directs his Spirit in life-giving ways. To me in this text, Jesus has the courage to break open to God in this moment but also in every moment. And he has the ability, I think, to stand the test with the devil because he has allowed himself to break open to the Spirit of God. Even in the stark dryness of the desert and the loneliness of that conversation with the devil, Jesus' Spirit seems to reach for the strength of the holy, opens to the divine presence, 
and relies on the power of God to sustain him and guide him. Like Jesus, we say we want to be broken open, but we also know it is terrifying, especially if we've been boarded up for a long time or if we can still remember that time when we felt ripped open spiritually and no relief came. Today, only you know what kind of devil lurks in your life or what kind of bribes and dealings have been going on with your spirit. I believe that we are given this unique time called Lent by our spiritual church parents because they understood that the soul cannot bear too much human freight. And so we are given these 40 days on our calendar to be broken open. If you have hardened your heart against someone today and are loath to forgive, or if you have decided to simply ignore them and hope they will go away, then you need to be broken open. If you've decided to close off communication with a family member because they have not lived up to your expectations or have disappointed you time and time and time again, perhaps this Lent is a time to pray for them and to hold them in God's light rather than simply ignoring them and hoping they will go away or shut up. And if you feel underappreciated and ignored and are harboring secret feelings of resentment and on those dark days even hate, then it is time to anoint your weary spirit with the oil of mercy for your sake. And if you have forgotten how to love God and are secretly wondering if there actually could be in your life such a grace-filled, loving, guiding presence as the Spirit who led Jesus into the wilderness, then it is time to be broken open to your own life once again, to the powerful, life-changing presence of the God of all ages, the Queen of the wilderness, and the Master of your soul. We can be broken open to God through the sacred experience of being alive to each other at each step of life, even in the driest and the hardest of times, as we watch and feel those damp tears roll down the cheeks of our faces. My Aunt Dorothy died this past week. She was 92 and a half and had been living in a weakened condition for three of her last years. All of us in the family were ready for her death, but she was the last living member of the last generation of our family. So there was a feeling of real sadness and loss as we anticipated her death. She was my mother's big sister, and she never let my mother forget it. And she had six girls herself. We had three in my family and a boy. And my cousins, all my cousins, were like sisters to me when I was growing up. So as we texted and emailed and chatted these past days with each other, memories of our life together have been flowing through us. And we have been breaking open even as my dear aunt had been closing up. Last week, my sister, who is now the only sibling and the only one of all the cousins living close to my aunt, drove up to Traverse City in Michigan to see her for the last time. As Leslie, my sister, entered the room, my aunt did not look up, but remained silent, dulled, and inattentive. Leslie sat there for a while and held my aunt's hand, and then Dorothy did something extraordinary. She looked up out of the fog at my sister, and I think she must have seen my mother's face, because she said one word, 
sing. Now, in my family, we all know what that means. It means sing the old songs, cradle me again in the Gospels, tell me the old, old story, but don't tell me, sing it. My sister Leslie responded with a command performance. She began with every verse of amazing grace she could remember and think of, then moved on to Be Thou My Vision and stood up for all the saints. And she sang for a half an hour with my aunt, and she ended with the song that has been sung in our family in every deep and stark moment of our life together, Great is Thy Faithfulness. As the songs were being sung and my sister's beautiful voice filled the air, my Aunt Dorothy awoke to the music and broke open into her life once again, into her living life. At the end, she gathered Leslie in her arms and they held each other and they laughed together because it was such a joyful mu uh, moment and there were no tears only gratitude and laughter, for they both became alive again, broken omen, open to the moment of new life. Being willing, being willing to be broken open is being willing to come alive again, even if, and sometimes especially if, we are facing some kind of death in our lives. If we are brave enough to enter, brave enough to walk into the wilderness, the wilderness experience offers us wild things. Grace to face our fears, strength to forgive, songs and courage to help us come alive again, renewed hope in the transforming spirit of God, and always, always the angels who come to deliver us. May it be so for us as we begin our Lenten journey. Amen.